Prime Minister Stephen Harper is on the road. He's arrived in Australia for the upcoming G20 summit. He might prefer if economic issues dominated the agenda, but with a war raging in Iraq and Syria and progress being made on climate change, Stephen Harper was forced to broaden his agenda. Mike Lucatur is traveling with the Prime Minister. Before his face-to-face -face meeting with New Zealand's Prime Minister, Stephen Harper went nose-to-nose -nose with local tradition in a native ceremony at the government house. The intimate gave way to intense with an intimidating warrior dance called the haka. It was a much more friendly atmosphere when Harper met with New Zealand Prime Minister John Key. Their discussions included the threat posed by ISIS, Reports suggest the Americans now believe the war against ISIS has to include getting rid of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. Canada has been calling for Assad's resignation, but Harper isn't ready to do more than that. Whatever objections the government of Canada has against the government of Syria, we are not in, interested in any war with any government in the region. Our only military fight is with ISIL. Another threat is Russia. Vladimir Putin's frigates showed up off the coast of Australia ahead of the G20 summit in Brisbane. The ships don't bother Harper, but he is upset at Russia's continued march into eastern Ukraine. Whether it takes, as I said, five months or 50 years, we will never accept uh, the illegal occupation or annexation of any Ukrainian territory to Russia. Now, when the G20 summit gets underway, the recent climate change deal between China and the U.S. will be hard to ignore a deal that Harper admits could pave the way for a new global agreement. An agreement is only possible and, and will essentially be done if they both come to the table, which they appear to be doing. Now the Prime Minister has made it clear he doesn't want climate change to dominate G20 discussions, preferring instead to focus on economic issues. And it's really not surprising when you consider that Canada is on pace to fall short of its own emission targets and doesn't seem eager to embrace even tougher ones. Mike LeCouture, Global News, Brisbane, Australia.